So how is everyone today? Good. Not convinced. <laughs> so we're going to try this again. How is everyone today? Good. Now, it's important to understand, my question wasn't how are you feeling today, because that's different. You may not be feeling great, fantastic, wonderful, whatever it is that you said, but what I asked was, how are you? Complete. Complete. That doesn't change based upon how we feel. Our completeness, our perfection, that stuff doesn't change. Okay? So keep that in mind. I am great, even when I don't feel so hot. Now, today we will be talking about this idea of let there be peace. Now, do you know the song, Let There Be Peace on Earth? Sing me a little bit of it. I'm not sure if I believe you. Okay, so uh, you've convinced me you know it. Question is, what if the reason we don't have peace on earth is because we're not understanding what this song is really saying? Because, let's start it off. Let. What does let mean? To allow. So just starting off there, allow there to be peace on earth. And let it begin, or let that allowing start with me. Just that right there. Let there. Do we know where the there is? Pause that for a second and put that up there. Let there be. To be. Or not to be, sorry. To be. <laughs> this idea of being. It does not say, let me do peace on earth. Let me bring peace on earth. Let me find peace. Let me. Let there be peace on earth. Now, if we're going to let something be, then part of that means we have to be doing something that is not allowing it to be, because the beingness of it is already there. It doesn't say, go find it. Why did Gandhi say, be the change? He didn't say, change yourself, and then go show others what you did. It's not what he said. He said, be that which you want to see in the world. So allow there to be peace. Now give me some other synonyms for what peace is. Serenity. Serenity tranquility. tranquility harmony. Harmony. Give me one more. Happiness. Happiness and joy. Okay? So let there be all of these things that you named. Let them be on earth and let this allow this beingness to start where in and with me now where does that leave us because if now we understand that we are the ones responsible for this thing called peace tranquility joy harmony happiness serenity It's on me? Hmm. Then maybe I'm no longer in a place where I can blame the government, politicians, my parents, my siblings, my fifth grade teacher, my minister, the prayer chaplain, the ushers. Like, I can't blame anybody anymore because if what I'm saying is I am the one responsible for being it. I am the one responsible for allowing it to be. Then the very first thing I have to do is find out everywhere in my mind, in my consciousness, in my heart, where I am obstructing this. Where am I placing obstructions that are no longer allowing peace to be? Where am I, in essence, allowing a consciousness of a beaver to build a dam to block the flow of peace? Somewhere in my consciousness, in my heart space, there is something gnawing at something to make it fall in my consciousness, in my heart, in my energy to block peace, happiness, joy, serenity, tranquility. You know, there's a passage in the Bible where it says, so you're going to the altar and you have a gift. And this is my paraphrased version of it. It's not the King James Version. 
you have your gift in your hand and you're walking toward the altar. And then you realize, oh, my brother, my sister, my friend, someone has something against me right now. Then take the gift and lay it down near the altar. Don't place it on the altar. Lay it near the altar. Then go to them and reconcile. And once that is done, then offer your gift. Now let us imagine for a second, and no Reverend Sherl, I am not saying to them to do this, but imagine if you withheld your tithes and offerings before you reconciled with anyone who harbors ill will towards you or that which you harbor towards them. How much tithes and offerings would we be offering? Who would be laying it beside the basket? Because we all have folks. You know, as the young folks, the millennials say today, haters, haters are going to hate. But the idea is, you are reconciling does not mean you are going to go to them and make them like you. Because you can't do that. To reconcile means, I know that you, we had a disagreement. And I simply want to be as authentic and as transparent and as compassionate as possible so we can talk about it. Because what we tend to do is, we have a disagreement. Mm, and we go. And then we go to the next person and we'll say, guess what? Me and this young lady, we had an argument last week. Last week. We had an argument last week. I really don't think she likes me, and I don't care. And then I go to the next person and say, guess what I just told him? I told him about her. And then I go to the next person. I told them about them, about them, about them, about them, about something that happened six months ago. Or I'm still telling the same story about the abuse that I received as a child, and I'm 51 now. Have I reconciled? Have I gone to that place? Now, remembering that the things in the Bible, we take them metaphysically, allegorically, metaphorically, right? So where in me do I have thoughts that are harboring things against me? You're too tall. You're too short. You're too fat. You're too ugly. You're not smart enough. You're, you're just like your mother always said. You're just like your father always said. Blah, 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 blah. Those are the friends, the sisters, the brothers, the things that we are supposed to reconcile with. Because the moment we reconcile with that stuff in us, reconciling with other people becomes easy. Like we say, namaste. We say it all the time. Well, some of us do. All the time. Especially if you're in yoga. Like we say it all the time. But do we really mean it? Do we really say namaste from a place that acknowledges and says there is a divinity, a divine place in me? And I'm going to say, we'll take that love, because we know love is merely another name for God. That which is love in me and as me sees and acknowledges itself in you. The love in me sees love in you and it recognizes itself. Are we living that? Or is it easy to stand in the six items or less line and see someone with 15 items or more, and rather than send them love, we let our brothers and sisters in thought chime in. What, she can't read? Oh, and she's pulling out coupons? Oh, what in Jesus' name? Oh, oh season of nonviolence. Oh, if Gandhi was here, he wouldn't. We let our minds run and run and run on all of these thoughts that cause us to feel animosity. We talk about a season of nonviolence, right? But are we being violent towards ourselves? Are we abusing ourselves? The manner in which we treat our bodies, are we abusing it? The manner in which we treat our minds, are we abusing our heart? Abusing our friendships and relationships. Are we abusing our life based upon the thoughts we are thinking? Because if we are going to let there be peace, let there be love, let there be joy, let there be light, let there be amazing, magnificent magic happening in the world. It has to happen here first. So where am I not feeling joy? Where am I not feeling serenity? Where am I not feeling in harmony? Where am I not experiencing the magnificent wonder that it is to be alive? Where in me is this missing? 
Because for as long as it's missing in me, of course I'm going to be able to spot it and identify it in other people that you're not as loving as you could be. You're not as forgiving as you could be. You're not as nice as you could be. You're not, like, I'm gonna, it's easy to do that. But it's not in them. The only reason I can do that is because it has to be somewhere in me. I don't know if I did this the last time I was here with you, but I'm going to do it now. So if I did it before, forgive me. Just saying. Not repeating on purpose, I'm just saying. So don't come to me afterwards and say, you said, I don't. Anybody in here speak Japanese? Okay, so you may know what this is. Shh, silence. Tengu. Anybody know what a Tengu is? T-E-N-G-U. One word, Tengu. So if I were to say, Jim, I'm going to give you $100 million, get a team together, and once you find it, I will then give every member of your team $100 million. Get me a Tengu that's about yay big, uh, preferably a red one with gold trim, and that's where I stop and I leave. He has no idea what he's looking for. He's going to Google it, I'm sure. $100 million? Siri, what's it? Like, he's going, I know he's going to. But the idea is, if he knows what it is, then he can find it and identify it, right? So once he Googles, he's like, oh, that's, mm, that's a Tengu? Let's go find it. Whatever is in our minds or our hearts is what we're going to recognize. The only reason we can identify violence or nonviolence is because somewhere we have a paradigm that can identify what violence is. Now, that doesn't mean we are violent. It doesn't mean we've been de desensitized to violence. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means somewhere in the office of our consciousness, there is a file cabinet. And in that file cabinet, under V, there's a file for violence. And if you open the file, it identifies all the manners in which violence can be expressed. And the thing is, we tend to compartmentalize. For some, violence is what happens in the street. Someone attacks you, that's violence. War is violence, but watching a Mike Tyson fight isn't. Watching an MMA fight isn't. It's not violence. They're just fighting. <laughs> watching someone get tackled the way they just got tackled it wasn't violent. It was just a tackle. So just understand that we have, and I'm not saying right or wrong, because what I'm saying is God is all there is, and God is good. Unity principle number one. There is only one power and one presence. God, the good, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. That's it. So I'm not saying. All I'm saying is we have paradigms that compartmentalize and identify certain things as whatever they are. And if we are going to be whatever it is we are going to be, then whatever that is, we have to get it out of the way. We have to gain very specific clarity to know what does it mean to walk the walk? What does it mean to talk the talk? What does it mean to stand in and as love? That when someone is standing there ready to smack me upside the head. Sorry, Mom, because sometimes when I, go, when I go visit my mother in Pittsburgh, my mother was the primary abuser when I was growing up. And she still has the tendencies to want to, you know, in her, what, 90-year-old body, still wants to ball up a fist and swing. But I know martial arts, so we're good. But the feeling of my mother still wants to hit me. The woman cannot just simply love me. I'm 51 years old. March 25th, 1966. It's now March 2018. You haven't gotten to the point where you could just love me and, and let us. So what do I do? I stand in the consciousness that says, I have to know for her, her divinity. Because right now she doesn't know it for herself. Because the more I can do that, the easier it is for me to walk this walk. Did I tell you what happened to me two, three years ago when I was walking down Constitution Avenue in D.C.? Okay, you'll get the point. A couple of years ago, I'm walking down Constitution Avenue in D.C. after having coffee with a friend. Uh, we're talking spirituality and mysticism. And as I'm walking, I hear nigger yelled out. And I keep on walking because it didn't even register. 
Like it didn't even register in my mind. And I hear it again, and I see this group of people standing over there, and I see their faces. And at this point, the truck is now beside me, and I hear it louder, and I see their faces. And then I'm like, oh, they're talking to me. A group of five, maybe 20, 25-year-old white men. And they scream it out again, F you, nigger. Very first thought that came through my mind is, thank goodness I am not one of Charles Xavier's mutants and the X-Men with telekinetic abilities, because I would have made the car levitate and probably flipped it over and shook them out of it. <laughs> that was the very first thought. The second thought was, but you're not, so what are you going to do? I'm going to pray. That's the next best mutant ability I have. And actually, it's better than theirs, because I know it works. So I stood in the consciousness that said, the only reason they're calling me that is because they don't know who and what they are. No one who knows who and what they are could ever try to hurt or harm another human, an animal, the planet, the ecosystem. If you really knew who and what you are, the only thing you would ever want to be is loving, compassionate, and supportive. They don't know, so I'm going to stand here and know it for them. But trust and believe, if they get out the car and come at me, I will introduce them to the ground and still know love for them. <laughs> because metaphysical or spiritual bypass does not mean I'm going to stand there and allow my life to... doesn't mean that. But it means I'm still going to be as compassionate and as loving as I can be while making them sit down. So here we are in our everyday lives and things, situations, and people like that are going to show up. And we have to ask, am I surrendering my peace to them? Am I surrendering my peace to that? Am I surrendering and relinquishing my power, my presence, my love, my wisdom, my serenity, my I am to that? Am I saying I'm not worthy of this power, this presence, this love, this joy, so take it from me. Because that's what we tend to do. Every time we watch the news and we let something that someone recently said or signed or whatever, we hear about the next shooting or the most recent shooting, and we go into this spiral of, well, I don't understand why they don't just... And be angry. Yeshua got angry when he went into the temple and was like, oh, I know, I know y'all ain't tearing up my father's house. Started flipping tables and whipping folks. And that's Jesus. So what do we do? Feel the anger. Don't be the anger. There's a difference. When someone says, how are you today? Don't say, I am angry. I'm angry. I feel anger. That immediately takes one of those logs off of the river that blocks the flow. Because it's not what you are, it's what you feel. And an emotion is energy in motion. And the sooner we back off and realize this is not what I am, it's what I feel, the energy starts to move. So feel anger if you're going to feel it. Feel afraid if you're going to feel it. Because the more you allow yourself to be present with every color and every spectrum of every thought and every emotion, then you're being authentic. Then you're being transparent. Then you're allowing yourself to be in the flow. Identify it. It's what I feel. Then shift. It's what I feel. Be clear on why. I feel this because she offended me. What could she possibly say that could offend you? Because what you'll notice is she said something. She called me stupid. The only reason she could call me stupid and it resonate is because, like a tuning fork, if I hit an A, the A string is going to vibrate. But if there is no resonance, the tuning fork, it's not going, they're not going to vibrate. The, the champagne glass is not going to shatter until the vibration makes it and then it explodes. Am I allowing that to resonate and shake me to the point of shattering? Or am I made of some form of Pyrex, some kind of vibranium, some kind of something that can, it'll shake, but it will not break. 
Nothing anyone can say or do can rob us of our peace or our harmony. We have to give it to them. No one can control us unless we tie the string and let them manipulate us. But we have to be clear on where is that in my mind? Where is that in my heart? Where is that in my consciousness that is allowing, that is feeling like this is right? Because until we go there, to the kingdom of heaven, which is within, till we go to that place that Yeshua spoke of, till we go there, because as we know, go within, kingdom of heaven, go within. Heaven, once you are there and all else will be added, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, that consciousness that knows who and what you are, then all else. Peace has no choice but to show up. Love has no choice but to show up. If it's the walk you are walking, if you click your heels together three times and say, there is no place like love, joy, peace, harmony, serenity, bliss, then you will be there. But it's up to you to let there be peace. And so it is.